Howdy folks, my name is Richard Procopio and today I'm going to be taking you through a first impressions video of the MMO Raiders. Now this is in closed beta currently and is being developed by Perfect World in North America and it is an upcoming free to play action combat monster hunting MMO. Let's check it out. Alright, let's start off in the character creator and look through some of the options here. Uh, you only get humans, there are no other races, and you can pick male or female. I'll just show you some random samples of each of what you can uh, look like. And uh, here's some of the females. Alright, they also have a voice slider uh, there that you can choose different voices. They didn't really have that implemented for this closed beta. Now, while you're creating your character, you choose a style. Now, there are no set uh, classes in this game. You are not locked into this choice. This is just how what you're going to start off as and I'll show you later how this whole thing works. But right now you get to choose Defender, Berserker, Cleric, or Sorcerer. Uh, they all have different weapons that they use and a different style that they use. Uh, the Defender and the Berserker are more melee and the Cleric and Sorcerer are more ranged and of course you have this neat posture button on the bottom here if you want to strike a pose. Now here in the appearance section, you get to change the face slightly. Yeah, each face, you know, changes it a little bit. There are no sliders. You can't change the bridge of your nose. You don't have that kind of level of detail in this character creator. The skin tones go from, like, mildly tan to whitish. <laughs> Again, not a lot of options there. And then, But you can choose different styles of makeup. Um, down here in the head section, there are a, a bunch of different choices for hairstyle, um, and you can really go wild with your color choice. So take a look at that palette down there. It's like, okay, let's, uh, purple, red, yeah, turquoise, sure, why not? We can go, we can go crazy here. So we'll go with purple. All right, and uh, you got your eye color. And then there's an interesting thing. In a, in a character creator that doesn't actually have too many options, check out this tattoo section here. Now, there are 25 different tattoos. And, and just, just look, you can position it, and you can change the scale of the tattoo, make them bigger or smaller, change the color. And it just seems out of place in a character creator that doesn't give you a ton of options. I mean, this is kind of like APB level stuff here, right? Um, and it's pretty robust and it's kind of interesting. Uh, it, it, it totally surprised me that they had this in here. And, and it's not just tattoos in here either. You'll see uh, as we get down further, there are actually scars that you can uh, customize. And you can, you know, you, could, you can go kind of kind of nuts with this. It's kind of cool. Different color tattoos. And you see here, look, here's a here's a Wolverine rake across the face, and look, we can make it bigger and smaller. I don't I don't know if I've ever had this level of control with scars before. So this was a nice little uh, surprise here. Where do we where should we put this scar? On her nose, on her lips. All right. And then we got this skull tattoo, and uh, if we change the scaling of it and position it just right. Oh yeah, that's epic. Prepare to see a lot of people come launch day looking like this. For sure. <laughs> it's going to be very popular. Now you also get to choose your starting clothing for your character. There are two different outfits you get to choose from. And you can customize which color they are. You got a bunch of different options here, which is kind of cool. Now, I also played around with the male character creator a little bit and came up with something quite unique and quite special, and I think you'll enjoy it. He is very, very manly. All right, let's check out the gameplay a little bit. You will recognize immediately how questing works in this game. You turn in quests at people with question marks over their head, and you receive quests from people with exclamation points over their head, and you will get quests like... Collect Moss Spider Poison Gland, zero of five. And also, you'll get quests to eliminate Gray Wolves, zero of ten. So nothing too difficult to understand here. Questing works like many other games. Now slightly different than other games, or some other games, is how the combat works. It's much more action-oriented. If you played games like Vindictus, or Dragon Nest, or Terra, or even some Guild Wars 2, you'll find that the combat is a little bit similar to it. 
It is uh, more action oriented. You actually have to aim attacks. You can hit multiple enemies in an arc in front of you. And you also can dodge attacks, which will be very important later when I show you how boss fights work. The character I'm currently playing here is a sorcerer, so a lot of my abilities are more ranged in effect. Um, I will show you how a berserker looks a little bit later as well. As you can see, looting works pretty standard. You get lots of items for squishing monsters. And uh, in this particular quest, I'm picking up spider glands, which is always fun. Now you'll notice that the animations here are really kind of nice to look at. You know, you've got those ice spikes that come out. Uh, a lot of the monsters will telegraph their movements quite well so that you can dodge out and take advantage of the action-oriented combat system. I did find that some of the player animations were a little bit slow. It felt like that, you know, you'd get stuck in the animations for a while and it, it, you know, it took a little bit to get used to. But for the most part, the action was fun and felt pretty fluid. Now, you're picking up things all the time when you're fighting different enemies. Uh, you pick up, like, their claws and their jaws and their fur. And this uh, really lends itself to acting a little bit like Monster Hunter for anyone who's ever played that before. Because you are gathering these crafting items to craft different items you'll see off of these vendors. Now, this is how crafting works. You don't actually have to have a skill like blacksmithing. You will find a vendor who has something like Otten's Necklace to make. And as long as you have the components, you can craft the item. And that's how you get a lot of your upgrades in this game, just by fighting the monsters in the area and finding uh, a vendor that can make cool stuff for you. And if you can find it in your inventory, you can actually equip them. Ah, there we go. One of the things I quite enjoy about this game is the fact that you actually can get different special weapons. It's kind of like the bundle system in Guild Wars 2 or even the vehicle system in uh, World of Warcraft where you can sometimes replace your action bar with new special buttons. For this quest, even though I'm in a sorcerer spec, I actually uh, got this special bow which actually harms wolves really well. So it really helps speed along this quest. I can snare them. I can do a really powerful knockdown type move and I can take them out quite quickly with this bow. Ooh, that looked like it hurt. Let's add some insult to injury. All right, next I'm going to show you how the skill system works. Now, this kind of looks like a standard talent tree here. See, I'm in the Berserker section, and you can put points. You get points when you gain a level, and you can put your points in here and, and go down the tree. Uh, that's fairly standard stuff. But what isn't standard is I am not limited to just selecting things on the Berserker tree. I can actually go into these different trees, and I can spend points. You can see I actually have some points there in Sorcerer. Now, what happens is as you spend points, you unlock these masteries for free, and when you get down to the second tier of any of the, the, the different styles, you actually can learn skills from other styles. So that's what I've done here. As soon as I went to the second rung, I actually picked up some sorcerer skills so I can actually, you know, mix and match. Now, you can't use the skills from the other styles unless you actually have those weapons equipped that's appropriate for that style. So, for example, I cannot use sorcerer skills when I have a two-headed sword equipped. Now, the big thing about this game is it's big, huge, epic boss fights. The game's slogan is, hunt together or die alone, and boy do they mean it. Now, here I am going to take on this wolf boss with multiple tails. His name is Fleetfoot. And even though we're about the same level, this quest is recommended for two players at a time. And since I'm alone, I'm actually going to have quite trouble with it. Now you'll see there, I just took a tail whap to the face and it took a large percentage of my health and yet multiple spells that I've cast on him so far have done almost no damage. Now these bosses have very specific attack animations, very specific special moves. It's all about learning the pattern of these bosses and trying to dodge as much as possible. Getting hit with these devastating attacks just won't cut it. Now, it is possible, even though I'm a little bit uh, undermanned here, to actually defeat this boss if I executed all my dodges perfectly and continue to kite this guy around. Uh, that is, of course, unless I run out of mana, which I am using quite steadily. As you can see, these bosses absolutely mean business. And unfortunately, uh, I am not able to take this out without any help. Lucky for me, however, I can cheat. I did have access on this account to a significantly higher level Berserker character, and you can see I make fleet work of Fleetfoot. 
I know, I'm a cheater. But he had good loot. Alright, here's another boss fight. Now keep in mind, I am grossly overleveled for this content, but you can get the idea of what these boss encounters are like. The animations are extremely impressive. The special moves these, these guys have are just absolutely magnificent to behold. Um, you can stun the creatures, they have different animations there, but you absolutely have to learn the patterns of these bosses and get the heck out of the way or you will be flattened like a pancake. This is where that dodge mechanic, as you could just see there, comes in handy. You don't want to get hit by something like that. Even the death animations are really fun to watch. And more good loot. Alright, here's another boss. This is a froggy boss. This guy's got a lot of cool animations as well. Again, I am overleveled for this content, but I wanted to be able to show you what it was like without getting my butt handed to me all over the place. Frog throw up is definitely something you want to avoid at all costs. It will be absolutely devastating to you if you were a low level character and got hit by that. Now watch this closely. I'm actually going to knock the horn off of this frog and it actually lays there on the ground. Now had I known what that did ahead of time, I would have picked up that horn and it changes your action bar like one of those bundles. And you can actually skewer this frog with his own horn, which would have been a lot of fun to do. I think that's a really cool mechanic that these bosses actually have things that you can knock off and then environment, environmental weapons that you can pick up. Now here the frog just launched himself way up in the air and tries to crash down on me. Again, the animations and the sound effects and the camera shaking just really makes this combat feel very visceral, very alive, and very fun. There's me getting hit by that move. Absolutely killer. And I get swallowed whole and chomped a bit, which could never feel good. Alright, I've had enough of this frog. Time for him to go into his death row animation. Who wants frog's legs? Alright, one final boss here. This is the crawler. That's an NPC there that's helping me out as part of this quest line. Again, I'm over leveled for the content, but you get the idea. Really cool looking bosses. Grand scale. Lots of cool mechanics to figure out. And, you know, will be quite a challenge if you are of appropriate level. These boss encounters are absolutely what make this game. I wish they were, they happened more often. I find that a lot of standard questing would take place before I would actually get to one of these bosses. I don't know how it is later on in the game, but that's my experience in the beginning. I just wish there was more of this and less of that. Now there are a couple things that bother me about this game. See this area here? I stumbled into it and there's a bunch of NPCs with gray exclamation marks on their head. Which typically means I can't pick up the quest because I'm not high enough level. But I am level 25 in a level like 9 or 10 uh, zone and that is not the reason I can't pick up these quests. The reason why I can't pick up these quests is because the questing system is very linear. And I just stumbled into this area before I had completed the quest before it and thus I get no reward for actually exploring. It's this feels a little bit antiquated, you know, especially considering games like Guild Wars 2 coming out with dynamic system. I wish it wasn't as linear. I also found some weird anomalies with the AI. Uh, see here, I'm aggroing a lot of mobs at once here, and they are all chasing me. But all I found is just going down a little hill like this actually causes the monsters to immediately reset. They don't actually chase you down the hill, nor path around the hill, they just reset. Not the biggest deal in the, in the world, but you know, you can see how these things can be uh, exploited. Now with these small little things aside, I did find some things that were really kind of interesting. For example, there's different guitars that you can actually acquire and make music with. And that's what you do if you want to change guitars. <laughs> I can see mus musicians really getting a kick out of this. It's kind of like the Lord of the Rings music system. Probably not as advanced, but you will need multiple people in order to play in a group with all these instruments. Each one has a slightly different sound to it. The mahogany guitar is certainly the best.
Oh, oh, oh yeah. There are also mounts in this game. I found uh, the ability to craft three different types of moa birds, so you can ride around on a chocobo chicken thing. But that was not my favorite part. This is my favorite part. Oh, okay. Boss fight time. Better get off the chicken. So this is the Goblin Golem. And he is smashing me in the face. Now again, I am much higher level than this. 25 to 16. This is recommended for a few players as well. But I'm noticing very quickly here that every time I'm wounding him, he's healing back up. So I gotta figure out a way to actually start doing some damage to this guy. And that's what I notice. Oh, he's got a big glowing crystal on his chest. Maybe I should target it. And a long time later... I'm actually able to shatter it. There we go. Now the boss throws a hissy fit and seems to get tired of the goblin riding on his shoulders. Okay. And voila, now he's vulnerable. But that won't stop him from punching in my face a few more times. Now that's going to wrap things up, guys. Uh, this game has a lot of things going for it. It's free to play. It's got really engaging action-oriented combat. And these boss fights are absolutely out of this world. I can see these really ramping up in difficulty. And if they require 15 of your friends to beat, then that's going to be a lot of fun. This game goes into a closed beta phase with a lot more people starting on the 18th of August. And uh, I hope to see more of this game as it gets closer to release. Well, that's going to wrap things up, folks. Once again, my name is Richie Procopio for Massively.com. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you read all the articles on Massively.com and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot, and I'm going to leave you with this.